Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Well, actually, I'm sitting with my other friend, Katie. Uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, Katie is a, part of the, a big part of the Hair Industry family. She organizes and does all of our events, and we have some cool events coming up. We just had a call yesterday with Pressy Poe. So Pressy Poe and Friends is happening in 2024. So I think this is the first time that we've actually announced it, um, but that's all we can announce because everything else is on the DL. Mm. What's up, Katie? Hey, how's it going? Excited to be here. Excited to talk to our guest today. I, I am very excited. So um, we have to give out another shout out to Charles and Sharon Reiser who own the temple, the Paul Mitchell Temple. Is it Temple Paul Mitchell or Paul Mitchell? I think it's Temple Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell, the Temple Paul Mitchell. The Temple Paul Mitchell. Yeah. They own the Temple Paul Mitchell School in our hometown of Frederick, Maryland. So and where Presley Poe happens. Where Presley Poe happens every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shameless plug. <laughs> and we'll get, you'll have a thousand of them before <laughs> next April. April 13th, go mm -hmm. ahead and uh, mark it off. We, uh, I think that's the date. That's not a confirmed date, but that's yeah. about the date. About so, the uh, date. you know, April 13th, 2024, uh, yada, 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 yada. We'll talk about that a thousand times. But so um, I have so much respect for Charles and Sharon. And, and not what's really cool, too, is, is that they are such, like, leaders in our community, in our immediate community, but they're also leaders of the hair industry as a whole. You know, when we were setting up in here, I actually was thinking about this, looking around, like, the kids that go to this school particularly have no clue the education they're getting is, like, beyond next level. This is not your typical hair school. And, I mean, Sharon is a badass. Charles knows, like, everything she does it. They're the perfect yin and yang. And uh, working with them is so amazing and easy and inspiring. I just love them. It is. I mean, I'm going to go back to the students real quick. Again, shameless plug. But last year at Presley Poe and Friends last April, um, Sharon and Charles had Presley and had uh, Mr. Sam, the Sam Via stay and do a class for the students. And I, I just don't, I don't really, you know, I, I don't know what they know. You know what I mean? I, I can put it to you this way. When I was in hair school, we had a visit with Trevor Sorby, and I didn't quite absorb, like, who Trevor who was, was, you know? Yeah. And then it was after, when, after I got out of school, and I'm like, Oh crap! I spent time with Trevor Sorby. You know that that was that was mind blowing to me. You know, and yeah. I mean he's so and like for Tony and I, um, we're about a half a generation too young to like um, to have the Vidal Sassoon thing. I mean we certainly respect him, but Trevor was our guy. You know more so than mm -hmm. Vidal was our guy. So he was our guy. So anyways, uh, when Sharon called me and she said you have to talk to this person. What Sharon says, I do. <laughs> and um, and when she said that uh, that our guest Melissa Melissa Yamaguchi was going to come in, um, and 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 I, I'm going to be honest, Melissa, I, I don't know a lot about you, but I kind of like to enter conversations that way because the whole idea here is just a couple friends sitting around a pub having a drink. So I, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. But um, but again, when Sharon says you have to talk to this person, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I go, what time is she going to be there? And so here we are at 10 a.m. on this Tuesday morning, and uh, and we get to chat with you. So Miss Melissa Yamaguchi, welcome to your day off. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I like how you say my name. I feel like I should become get a stripper pole or something. <laughs> Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi. Yeah. Wasn't there? Well, wasn't the name of the uh, the skater? Wasn't there a skater? Yamaguchi. Name? Yes. Yeah. People ask my husband all the time if he's related, and he says, as long as she's a gold medalist, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome, Melissa. Where are you from? Originally Oklahoma. I now reside in California, and I have for let's see, how long have I been out there? Oh gosh. 30 some odd years. Have you ever heard of a town in Oklahoma called Shawnee, Oklahoma? I it, Shawnee, Oklahoma, I certainly have. Are you you're familiar with it? I am. I'm from a town called Chickasha. And oh. so Shawnee's, Shawnee's not super far. Yeah. That's where uh, Presley's from, uh, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's if you blink and, and, and cough at the same time, you'll miss it. Yeah, that's what she yeah. says as well. That's why she moved to Portland, Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she felt like she had more of her people there. So where are you? You said you're in California? I'm in California in, in about 45 minutes north of Los Angeles, Westlake oh area. Yeah. 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 That's cool, man. Yeah. It's nice. The weather's super nice. 
How long have you been out there? 38 years. Oh, nice. I had to think about that. I've been with my husband 38 years, so maybe I've been out there 39. That's older than I am. You've been out there longer than him. Lies. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> I'm not Tony. I'm not ID checking. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Melissa, how did you uh, how'd you find the industry? My husband. So I moved out to California or come out to visit my mom. And she's saying, what do you want to do? Uh, what do you want for your birthday? It was coming up. And I said, I don't know. I think I'd kind of like to have my hair taken care of. That was the whole Janet Jackson and Rhythm Nation time. Mm -hmm. I said, I'd like my hair taken care of. And she said, I don't know any hair salons out here yet because she had just moved. She to said, LA. You're on your own. Or to California. Uh, at that time, it was in. she was in Ventura. Okay. So I get the phone book out and just start flipping through and find a cool ad. Call and I say, who's your best guy? And they said, that'd be Billy. So I, I'm looking it through l magazine for looks that i like and a lot of the male models had really long black hair and be braided and and had their backs to the camera or whatever and i get in to the waiting area and i look over and there's a guy standing there with extremely long hair and it's french braided and i'm like ah oh, really okay this is a sign he then comes over to me and he said are you melissa and i said i am and he bows to me my husband's japanese and i thought i said oh we're gonna get along great <laughs> <laughs> you're already bowing I love it so um my father was an interpreter in the american military in Japan, but growing up in oh. Oklahoma, I didn't know anybody oh. who's Japanese. So I said to my husband, forgive me, what's your ethnicity? And he said, I'm part Japanese, I'm half Japanese, half Portuguese. And I said, and he said, why do you speak Japanese? And what's that twang behind it? Yes. <laughs> 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 so that we got along famously, my mom picked me up and the whole way out of there, I'm talking nonstop about this guy. And she said, you're going to talk oh. about this boy the whole way home? And I said, no, pull over. I run back, run up the stairs, go into him, and I said, can I have your phone number? And he said, is everything okay? And I said, yeah, I'm going to ask you out sometime. His face turned 50 shades of red. <laughs> he had, he write, he's staring at me while he's writing down his phone <laughs> number on the car, just trying to make sure I'm not serial, right? So he hands it to me. I call him that night. I said, do you remember me? And he said, Oh yeah. oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I remember you. I'm sure everyone at the salon was talking about you that whole day. So I, yeah. we, he came to pick me up. I lived on a boat at that time. Came to pick me up at the harbor. Dang. And down at the pier. And I mean, at the harbor. And we, uh, we've been together ever since. Whoa. Literally, yeah. So when I had young staff members, male or female, say, I couldn't possibly ask that guy out. And I go, you got to be kidding me, right? What's the worst they can say? No? What's that mm. mean? Well, you know what's funny is that, um, and if Tony was here, he would we would talk about it. But you know, one of the mantras Sorry. with the pod, <laughs> no worries, <laughs> you're, you're better than that guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that one of the mantras for the podcast ha has has always or has been, and how we've built it and how we've met people was like the answer is always no until you ask. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. There's never a yes on the on the other side of not asking. That's right. That's right? exactly right. You've got to you've got to take a risk. Well, I'd venture to say because I would classify myself as a strong woman, mm -hmm. as I, very clearly you are, and a lot of times it's intimidate like we're, it's intimidating, especially for men. Yeah. And so I think that women sometimes think about that, uh, you know, if they're before they're going to do something, and that's kind of the thing. It's like the reaction or what's how they going to think. Well, well, just do it. Like if that's who you are, just that's do exactly it. Exactly right. And I got to tell you something. Uh, we can get it. I know we'll get into this, but I have a, my partner and I have a business partner and I have a podcast together and we were working with the producer at one point who was very reactionary and he would try to like, you know, hold the girls down. And I'm not mm. talking about my breast. He would try to <laughs> hold, <laughs> he was holding the girls down. My, yeah. my partner and I, uh, she and I would talk to each other later. We're like, dude, what the heck, man? This guy's like, not to be an ageist, but he's like seven and nine years younger than we are. What are we letting this young boy tell us what to do? Like, what's up? Yeah. And so yeah. I said to her, we've got to stop measuring what we're going to say based on his potential reaction. I wouldn't do that with anybody. What's happening here? Yeah. So she and I had to reassess who we were. And I don't want to say refine our voice, but just I, I was I wanted to encourage the two of us to stop overthinking everything so much. This is like the whole holdback for a lot of us on uh, multiple levels. We mm -hmm. overthink everything. You yeah. know, to that point, and I'm trying to think this through, so I might mess up, but but it, it's such an interesting place where you do hold yourself down because of someone else's reaction. Mm. Yep. You know, or you yeah. hold back conversation because of somebody else's reaction. I mean, if, if we all kind of gave each other the grace that we're all in this world, we're all experiencing this life together, <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that when, like, like 
I've always prided myself or, or this is how that I'm the one that you can come talk to. Like, I'm not going to be reactive to something. And if, if it's something that I feel reactive about, I'm going to put a pause on it and be like, maybe we should address this tomorrow because I want to process it before mm -hmm. I respond or react yep. to stuff. And I mean, I'm not 100% on that, but that's certainly a life goal is to not be, is to not be that reactive. Mm -hmm. But but if we could all just have that grace and, well, and understand. We're all connected. We are all electrical chemical reactions. And we, we receive things electrically and we produce things electrically. And we everything is a chemical and, and electrical reaction. None of us are separate from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Scientifically, we're all connected by the sheer fact that the three of us are sitting here breathing the same air, sharing the same time mm -hmm. together, this whole space of time. We're all connected, and we will be forever connected, which is why when I talk to people at different schools, and I've spoken to young, uh, gone into LA Unified and spoken to some of the younger kids, it's not a moral mandate. It, I'm not a moral mandator. I don't have any desire to try to tell you right from wrong in your life because that doesn't interest me and it's not my place. But it make when you realize that every single interaction that we have means that we are on some level forever connected. It would give you it would give you pause to use your verbiage on the people with whom you interact, the people with whom you sleep, the people with whom you make decisions to do things with on any level, business, professional, personal. So it just when you realize that that we're forever connected, you learn to see people differently. You treat them differently. You think of your interactions instead of just going through rote memorizations. When we go to schools, we are taught how to be workers and to not think. Right? Learning is a rote memorization, A, B, C, D. Well, who says, you know, I, and I understand the reason for systems. You have to have systems in order to be able to function. But when you can no longer think for yourself and you can no longer give yourself grace and think, give myself a pause and, and think about the other person, well, who knows what he or she's going through or they're going through, then you, if you can't do that and you're saying, well, that's not the way you're supposed to behave, that's not the way you're supposed to react, that's not how you're supposed to identify yourself, that's not how you're supposed to vote, whatever that is, when you d put these judgments on people, that's a fear base. And so you just got to pull back and realize we're connected. People react out of fear more than anything. I feel like this is, I'm going to totally geek out for a second. This was like me being here doing this like the like us coming together and like, this was supposed to happen like we were supposed to meet i'm like feel like everything you're saying inside my soul right now i love that like i really feel like it, you know and i totally put so much power in the universe and like what it brings to you and you, right. you know the things it's supposed to so i also think this is a perfect time for you to kind of explain what you do and kind of how Thank you're you. yeah. involved with the hair industry so when Billy and I decided to um, open our own salons, we, we, we opened one and then very shortly thereafter, because we were the very first day spa in our area, we had um, farm to table chef in the cafe in the very front and we had organic coffee and organic teas and people would come in even if they didn't get their hair done at, at the salon in the spa they would come in and eat at the cafe everything was farm to table patagonia is in our area so patagonia was really really a huge advocate for supporting all the farmers and the ugly fruit they mm -hmm. would go and collect all of it and then we would we would buy that whatever was available that day and yeah. we would buy it and then then make food for our our spa guest and we, we shortly thereafter, we started getting press and people started coming to us wanting us to franchise. No, thank you. We were young and we were, this was our baby and we didn't want to put her in beauty pageants, right? We just yeah, want to take care yeah. of her. <laughs> so we just stayed doing what we were doing, but, but our, we started to grow. And before we knew it, we had 12 salons and over a hundred and some odd, I, my husband and I, it's a, it's a, it's a corgi fight between the two of us. Um, and who, um, what the number, I say it was 175 employees. He's like, no, it was never that much, whatever. <laughs> it was a lot of people. Yeah. And so we had all these salons going, and I felt as though, even though our message was good, we started to, you can't homogenize your message. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't, you spread yourself too thin, and, and then you, I think you lose, and not everybody, it doesn't happen to everybody, it happened to us. We, I felt like we lost that spirit of, what the Yamaguchi team was doing. So we started pairing back. Um, some, by, some by economic force. Uh, you know, the, the, there was the economic downturn of our, uh, for a while there, and then the industry started to shift and change a little bit. A lot of the studios came in where people could run their own space, and things started to shift. So when that was happening, um, in the middle of that, forgive me, um, I was approached by the Salon Association, who is now transmogrified into the Professional Beauty Association. But they approached me at that time and asked me to be on their board, and I became their first female president, Ooh. which I always found so interesting because 
you know, over 88% of the industry is female. Isn't that and funny? And I always thought it was funny that there's these old guys are, well, we think this should be happening in the industry. Yeah. So I, I was elated to be able to come forward. And uh, I was so president for four years and then Professional Beauty Association's first president. Mm. Um, and, and, from there, a lot of my speaking engagements came about, and then okay. people would be in the audience and hear me speak and say, tell their their auntie and their uncle, and mm-hmm. I would get hired. It just started, you know, splintering. Love that. So I've been hiring. I've been my husband and I have traveled all over the world speaking. A uh, few places we haven't gone into, but we've spoken all over the world about the concept of energy and and feng shui. Um, and yeah, what's a nice wh- white girl from Oklahoma doing talking about feng shui? <laughs> 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 right. well, a nice girl who speaks Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So we, we start teaching feng shui all over the world, and I um, have been hired a lot to speak, and I spoke at the American Heart Association as their MC. Cheryl Burke, remember from Dances with the Stars? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was going to be their MC and got sick the night before. They called me the 11th hour and said, Melissa, will you be our MC? And I said, Are you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard me speak, and I've been known to slip a few <laughs> but I so I spoke the next day um I come from eight generations or five generations of school teachers and I came in with the script and it looked like a pig had been slaughtered on it and they were like what, what's going on with the script and I said I've rewritten a few things and they're like we've got we've got the 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 um the deck that goes along with it and I said you're fine well the <laughs> keynote speaker was Mariel Hemingway Ernest Hemingway's granddaughter right. and coming from a family of English teachers, they had some minuscule line, our, our keynote, uh, put your hands together for our keynote speaker, Golden Globe nominee, Mariel Hemingway, something that benign. And I thought, no one mentioned Papa. So I went went back and rewrote it and she had the script. So she knew what her cue was to come up, Mm -hmm. but I didn't see her in the audience anywhere. And I'm talking and then I go into our next guest and I said, we you know, talk about royalty in America, and it's through literature and the arts. That's our royalty, as far as I'm concerned. And one of our royal leaders was Ernest Hemingway, and we're so honored to have his granddaughter, who's done these things. She's coming up on stage, grabs my forearm, and says, we need to talk. And I'm just arrogant enough. I didn't assume it was anything wrong, so I just kept mm-hmm. going. And besides that, I had the people from the American Heart Association still freaking off on the back <laughs> scene because I had changed everything. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, Right after that, she and I met the next. We we met the next day, um, and we've been best friends ever since. And Aww. she and I have our we have a podcast together called Outcomes the Sun, oh. and we discuss mental health and wellness and how to. We we've started the Mariel Hemingway Foundation. We're st- we're a resource navigator for people who don't know where to turn. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in Podunk, Oklahoma, or if you're in Los Angeles and New York. Sometimes you don't know where to turn because sometimes your insurance company doesn't cover help, Mm -hmm. and you don't know what your options are. Is it only big pharma? Is it something holistic? Is it something in between? Do I need to talk to somebody? What are the different methods of talk therapy? What what are the is psilocybin a possibility? What's this conversation about ketamine? Who do I need to listen to? So we are bringing all that together through our resource navigation. And I'm proud to say here for the first announcement that <gasps> John Paul DeJoria is one of our one of our uh, donators. He really came through and and mm. and supported what we're doing. Oh, that's awesome. So we we d- we do that. I continue to speak all over about energy. One of the reasons I'm here with the lovely Sharon and the gorgeous Paul, uh, Charles. I love that I love them just as much as you for all the reasons that you stated. And so I continue to speak about energy because if you own your energy, this is my tagline, if you own your energy, then you own your life. It doesn't own you. And if you don't make, th- I always taught my children to decide for themselves, to think for themselves, because if you don't, someone's going to think for you. Someone's going to decide for you. Um, when I've told the story, so people who are listening to you who have ever heard me speak before are going to hear the story again. Sorry. But <laughs> I used to, when I would take my kids out to dinner, you know, my uh, son Nobu and my daughter Seiji, and I would say something like, what do you guys want to eat? And Seiji's was like, yeah, I want this dressing on the side. Let she me guess, like, Nobu wanted sushi. No, <laughs> Nobu didn't know when he's looking. He's like, I don't, he's like, I don't know. You know. He's like five. And I said, you don't know what you want to eat? And he goes, no, just a minute, Mom, and need to take a little bit longer. And I said, what do you want to eat? I don't know. So I reached over one time and tapped the gentleman's shoulder at the table next to me. And I said, excuse me, sir, what does my son want to eat for dinner? And my son's like holding up the menu, like mom, and I'm like sliding down into the chair. And the guy's looking at me with a perplexed look. And I look back at Nobu, and I said, I, I said, I'm just kidding. I look back at Nobu, and I said, if you don't decide, somebody else will decide what you want to eat. And he was like, 
I'll take the mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've kind of Whoa. pushed that on my kids their whole yeah. lives. Um, you know, think for yourself. Think for yourself. Don't listen to what I'm saying even. Question me. Question everybody. Question authority. I really sound like a kid from the 60s and 70s, don't I? So I just want... I. That's my mantra is stop being a pacifist in your life. Stop assuming that your problems are because of someone else. Someone else can instigate an issue that can make your life more problematic. But ultimately, how you react is your choice. Your next move is your choice. And so um, that's what I'm here to share today. Did you always, like, feel like that? I mean, at what point did you feel like the hair industry needed this? Or is this just something that... You just always have done. I think this message is relevant everywhere. I've spoken to yeah. the National Association of Female Dentists. Oh, yeah, they have that microcosm of, of uh, speakers. Yeah, <laughs> We just can deduce it down to any kind of money grab. I, but I, I've spoken to everybody. Um, yeah. and I, but the hair industry, I have a love for because the hair industry, I don't do hair. I don't do makeup or facials or nails or massage or body treatments. Um, but the hair industry embraced me with so mm. much love. Simply because of osmosis, because of the guy I'm married to. Oh, you're married to a hairdresser? Okay, you're one of us. Yeah, for mm. sure. That was it. And mm. because of that love for me, I can't help but love it back. I love this industry. I love what it stands for. I love, I love it for all of its creative genius. I love it for all of its self-doubting flaws. And mm. I feel like it's my job to, to continue to spread as much as I learn and share. As much as I learn it, I kind of regurgitate it and give it back as fast as I can. Yeah. Mm. It's really interesting because right now, you know, the industry is absorbing this kind of stuff so much. Like, they just want it, yeah. even if they don't realize they want it. I mean, I'm an educator for purology, and oh. one of the things that we teach, it's a new program talking about, um, it's called IPOP, Inner Peace, Outer Prosperity. Ooh. And it's like going through your day as a hairdresser, and if you're someone who is even – five, 10, definitely 15 years in, you know, you know, these certain things like in between each client, you have to be able to reset yourself. Yes. You know, you have to kind of get that energy off of you and yes. get ready to absorb new energy. That's exactly right. People are driving home at the end of your day as a hairdresser on coffee all day, wine all night. That's, you right. Know? That's exactly right. And you're sitting in your car, just kind of staring off into space, hoping you make it home because all of your energy was given. That's exactly right. And that's the industry. Like we're givers. Like that's why we're here. Not different than the nursing industry. Mm -hmm. And when I've spoken to the nursing industry, they'll say, uh, disproportionate amount of us are overweight. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, well, that's because you're earth energy and you're giving and loving and nurturing all day long. Yeah. And this is a, this is a, uh, for lack of a better term, buffer because your emotions, you've got people dying on you. Yeah. You've got, if you, you can only allow yourself to get so close right. without it damaging your heart. So you're buffering yourself, even though you know, inherently know in the medical industry that being overweight is very taxing on the heart and all the organs, right? So we, we, we do what we have to do to survive. And we in the beauty industry, and I put myself in there, we, we, don't, we are givers. And we realize how therapeutic our work is. And so mm -hmm. when we're, you're the minute you touch someone's shoulders or hand or face or head, you've, they've given you a silent permission to enter into their space. Now, some don't. Mm -hmm. Some are still closed off and, and are criticizing and critical, but the, and and blocked, but those that open, the majority of them do, because mm -hmm. maybe so no one's listening to them, right? And so you're listening, and how do we not take that in without it affecting our health? Well, we where we have failed ourselves in our industry, and I'm so glad to hear that that it's uh, and and to learn from you also that it's being received. Where we have failed ourselves is by not is not is missing the education and the self knowledge of understanding this concept of energy. Mm -hmm. You are the greatest conduit of energy. So you're taking charge and releasing your battery. You're being, you've got to charge up, and then you're expelling all day long. Lifting your arms, this, this strain on this, your hamstrings holding your body up, this constant movement, holding that body in place to do the work, bending over to the shampoo, every motion you're doing is depleting your battery. Well, what are we doing? What food are we taking in to restore it? What drink are we drinking? What supplements are we doing? How are we moving the body? It, there's all these factors that come into play, and we don't talk about it enough because, you know, we're the bad boys of the industry, and we're coming out, we're <laughs> kicking, we're kicking ass, and we're doing all this great stuff. But we d we aren't we aren't taking care of ourselves. It's not too unlike what happened to the NFL. So at the NFL, you know, we it's the modern day 
you know, arena in Rome and we're watching the Lions fight the gladiators. And we've got all these NFL players that are just crashing into each other and suffering from traumatic brain injury. And it's like, you know, pluck, pick, you just see this invisible hand reach down to the football field, grab them by the helmet and throw them in the back and bring the next guy in. It's almost like they're, they can be tossed away like trash. Yeah. Disposable. And so when we, thank you, I was looking for the word and I was thinking 40 other different words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> I need that was a disposable sounds word. Sounds like it. <laughs> I'll throw that one out. So, we, we, when that started happening to the NFL, some of the people started going, hey, hold up, because what's happening to us? Well, what's happening is you're not being protected. Your spines aren't being protected. You're, you're suffering from this traumatic brain injury. Well, this is the same thing on a different scale, what's happening to us in the beauty industry. We're giving and giving and giving and giving. And coffee all day, wine all night, it's the same thing. So, you know, party all night, you got to get up in the morning, you're slamming a Red Bull. And it's <sighs> like they're just going, yeah. right? And it's yeah. like, oh, slow down. Mm-hmm. If you want to, why are there no old hairdressers? Because we're treating ourselves like crap in the interim. We've got to, you know, that's why we were like, there's a 90 year old hairdresser. We all should be 90 year old hairdressers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all should be cutting hair into our whatevers. Because there's, if the population, if the probability of us living in a healthy way into our 110s, 120s, even I dare say 130, if that probability is increasing every year, what are we doing? Yeah. What are you going to, you're going to retire at 65? Oh, I'm a badass. I'm cutting hair till 75. But then what? Then what? Then what are you doing after that? Because there's a high chance, high probability that you're going to be living another 20, 30 years. What are you going to do? You're going to be picking lint out of your belly button on a front porch? <laughs> I pray to God not. I mean, if, you, if you're a creative genius, which they all are, mm-hmm. and all hairdressers in the industry are, they're artists, what are you doing? What's next? So... It's all about owning that and realizing that it's not because he's going to fix it. No one's riding in on a white horse to save your ass. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, I'm going to bring you back a little bit. Um, again, I'm, I think I'm putting myself back on a soapbox again. But, but um, you know, earlier you were talking about, um, you know, what you consume is important to, to, re, to refuel the battery and, what, and, and mm-hmm. how we take care of our bodies and stuff. But also part of that is, and I know when my life changed, it's when I changed my consumption habits. Mm-hmm. And, and that's like, what am I bringing in? What am I watching? What am I reading? And all that's important. Like, like you know, the, the moment that I decided that like reality TV wasn't offering my life anything and, and, that, and that entertainment to me became less important yeah. than information grab, that, that's when like I started to see the world a little bit different and that's when I was able to, um, to really change where, where I was. So, uh, you know, I, I think that what we consume, yes. you know, on an individual basis is also part of that, that battery because there's sometimes, and I'll throw my daughter under the bus, but, you know, there's some things that my daughter watches that when I'm in the room, I can feel that battery, you know, draining. Sure. And that's not what that time should be. That time should be to like rejuvenate yourself and make you the best badass you can be. That's right. But you can only be that with a full battery. It's exactly right. And it's, I'm glad you brought that up because it is consumption. I sh- better word. You're just full of them today. Disposable, consumption. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm taking you with me on the next Pictionary game and all, that, all the different word games. So the, the, uh, the consumption of everything that we're taking in, everything you're consuming, your air, it's, it's, that's the epigenetics. What you think, how you behave, and the, and the environment around you depends on your, determines your energy levels. So how are you thinking? Everything you think, everything you say, everything you do, everything you consume, everything you are has an electrical charge. Everything. So why not make a choice to make it the best? Why? Why we, because I'll tell you why. We don't do it. It's marketing. The marketing genius of you need that Arby's burger, that Chick Fil A sandwich, that McDonald's, da 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 da. We all know the, we all know the jingles, right? Yeah. The marketing genius of slamming that into our brains when we are consuming the television and they're getting into us, or it's the coolest ads you see in the in the magazines or whatever it is. It's a form of control. Uh, I'm going to sound like a conspiracy theorist here, but it's a form of control because if one thing I always tell um, my, I, I have a nephew who's gotten in trouble with the law before, and one of the things I've always said to him is, just remember this, you are worth more as a head on a bed in that prison than you are walking free making your own choices because they can make money off you when that head's on the bed. Same thing with the medical industry. If you stay sick, you're worth more on, with your head on the bed of that hospital with tubes going in you than you are walking free and cured of whatever ails you. So if you get this notion of, hey, I'm more than a head on a bed, man. I'm I've got, there's a reason I'm alive. I had seven miscarriages before I had my kids. 
So when I had Seiji and Nobu, I would always say to them, why are you here? Well, how come you guys chose to stick it out? Because the other seven were like, yeah, take it out. This chick's crazy. I'm out, (laughs) right? Why did you guys decide to stick around? Don't just take up oxygen. Figure your life out. Figure out why you're here. It's a short ride. Even if you do live to 130, none of us are going to get to age 129 and go, I'm tired. I'm ready to go. Maybe some of us will. But I've met, I've met, 100-year-olds, 90-year-olds who are like, oh, I've got so much more I want to do. That's how we all should be living every single day, as I've got so much I want to do. But we, if we journaled our time, and you said, there's an hour watching Bravo. There's 30 minutes eating something fast on the run. There's this much time spent complaining. There's this, much, this, this minimal amount of time sleeping, mm-hmm. five hours. Like, what are you, Thomas Edison? Get your ass back in bed. Go to sleep. You need to be sleeping seven, eight hours minimum. What are we doing to make sure that our, that we are optimized? Why am I more concerned about the fuel that goes into my car than I am the fuel that's going into my mind, body, and spirit? And so it's it's really, uh, that's why I say if you own your energy, then you own your life, man. If, uh, don't you want to own your life? Like I, This is mine. This is my life, my path, my journey. If I And I can change it tomorrow. I can move around, whatever. But I've got to make that choice. And so we give away the choice when we don't make good choices for ourselves. You know, we're going to make bad choices. We're going to we're going to screw up because you've got to learn. And hopefully we'll be screwing up until that final day, just making making choices and screwing up and learning. But we've got to keep moving. We've got to keep going and do it for ourselves. Well, success happens through struggle and not in spite of it. That's exactly right. Right. Like like (coughs) the only failure in life is not starting. The only failure in life is not doing. You're right. If you think, look at it as like a plant. The minute you said that, I started thinking of a plant. If we were to put sound receptors on the plant, as it's growing, it'd be like, ow, ouch, and it'd be complaining the whole way out, right? The growing pains of, of growing. But it, the, if, if you left it as the seedling when it was nice and cozy and comfy, it's got to it's gotta go through something. It's got to drop leaves and lose a couple of limbs to keep going. This, we're the same way. We have, to, we have to go through the failure. We have to have the bumps and the bruises and the growing pains, and we have to. And then we, then we, it's, but it's how we react to it. It's how we say, if we complain about it, Charles said something to me really interesting. He was saying that he, somebody was complaining to him about some checkout person at a, at a grocery store. And he said, you know, what's funny about that is that, what, how long ago did that happen? Like four or five hours earlier. And he said, you're still talking about that person. That person, (laughs) they're like, they went on with their day. And it's true, you carry, we carry the crap. And so that's learned behavior. We just have to figure it out. But, but part of learning who you are is being honest about who you are. Uh, yeah, yeah, I eat spicy Cheetos. Yeah, I watch too much, uh, you know, junk TV. Yeah, I like, I, I dabble in magazines that I, you know, I, I read little junk magazines at the, the checkout, whatever. If, if you're honest about what you're doing, then you can start moving forward. I think that's one of the steps of the AA, right? They, you identify, like, yeah, I'll admit, I have wh- how many drinks, whatever they have to do. They have to be mm-hmm. profess their honesty about it and stop BSing themselves. So make a, take an honest assessment. This is who I am. This is how I behave. This is how I respond. You know, when I walked in upstairs, there was a group of girls, and, and they were looking, and they were, like, rolling their eyes, like, oh, great, we have another. You could see just a few, but then the vast majority of them were waving. And you're like, oh, it, this is exciting. And so I, I didn't zone in on the girls, but I noticed it, and I thought this is typical of, because we've learned to, A, see other women, even though I could be some of their grandmas, <laughs> see, uh, to see other women as a threat, to not want to hear what someone else has to say. There's, we, we've been programmed somewhere, either at home or our gaggle of, our gaggle of friends through that epigenetics. So how do, we break, how, how do we give ourselves permission to break free from that behavior? Well, and to not be scared to yes. do that. I think that's the root of a lot of that is having to look yourself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would venture to say I still don't 100% understand who I am as a person because I... I have a lot of things that I take care of and a lot of other people yeah. that I, you know, I have three kids under six. I have a husband, <sighs> you know, we just bought a new house. Wow. wow all wow. these things. Right. And I have my clients who I love and yeah. I work four days behind the chair, you know, and I'm always thinking about other people and don't ever make time to think about like myself and who I am and what I need. And actually after my third child, she um, is a year and a half now and I had major postpartum. Yeah. But I don't think it was actually full on postpartum. I think what it is, is my mom died six years before that, seven years, whatever it was. And I had a three week old at the time. 
So I threw myself into yeah. taking care of that child. Thank God I had that child because I don't process emotion. And I know that about myself. And after all that time had not processed losing my mom yeah, yeah. and holy shit here it was yeah. like I was staring it in the face and there was nothing I could do to get away from it. And that's what happens if you don't look at yourself in the mirror and don't realize who you are, or understand or learn about who you are as a person the body is going to bring it up to you. Oh, You're yeah. You're harvesting that shit, and oh, it yeah. is going to come has up. That, yeah, it oh, has yeah. that way of, yeah. It doesn't go away. No, it does not go away. It can hide it for so long, but it will find its way out. It will yeah. find its way out as though you have Tourette's. You're yeah. driving down the road. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, okay. oh, yeah. yeah, it just like bl- blows out out of nowhere. Yeah. So what year were you born? 86. 86. So you are a tiger. What you In what month? August. What day? 21st. Ooh, tiger yeah. monkey. So here's the deal. Oh, you really need to like your work. I because do. if you don't like your work, your whole world can fall apart. So, God, that's true. Right? Yeah. And you're tiger woman. You're strong. You're very strong. Um, you've got to, um, you're great at pressing the flesh like you could run for office. Like, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Da, da, da. You're really good at that, right? <laughs> the threat comes from, tigers are known to have a steel spine. Mm. And because you will lacerate somebody. If they irritate you, there's a line you have, right? There's a line. You're friendly and fun and hey, how's it going? Kiki, kiki, kiki. Then the minute someone steps a toe over the line, you're like, yeah, step back. And and then you're like, hey, you good? You want to go get something, a coffee? And they're like, "Uh, (laughs) well, I'm bleeding from the jugular, but sure. (laughs) Right? So, because you can get over it very quickly. And not realizing you've left people in your wake. Mm -hmm. But then you have a monkey at your work. So, you've got this kind of a black and white mentality about how things should be. And, like, you hold people to a standard, like, no, that's not going to happen. No. Like, I heard you're, like, liar. Like, I... (laughs) 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 Like, you... She's describing me, like, almost... Yeah. So, you... you, But you can pop the towel and have fun. Mm Mm-hmm. And... But you... But you also... You love to have a good time, but you are very black and white about stuff. You don't like to dabble around in the gray. No, it is or isn't. That's Mm -hmm. it. You... What year were you born? Oh, can I whisper it? Just do it. Come on. You're younger than me, don't. (laughs) 69. 69, so rooster. Oh, You're yeah. the rooster. Okay, what month? February. What day? 24th. I expect cards from everybody. Okay, so so you're the rooster. 24th, you're... Okay, so let me ask you a few questions about work because you're on the cusp. So you're the rooster. I already got you down. I got you down. But the, but the month, I, you're on the cusp. So let me ask you a few questions about work, okay? Step in if he's not being honest. Okay. So... Do you find that you are, well, I think you, have, I think you already answered this earlier, that you're, you're the diplomat. Like you, you, you like to keep the peace and you want things to be good. Like you don't like chaos and you just like things to be kind of calm. And let's work through this methodically. Let's just kind of move through. Like don't, don't, it's not that you're not open to the idea of excitement and chaos, but when it gets disruptive, it can really upset your stomach. And so you just like, let's just, figure this out. We don't need the drama. Or are you willing to step in and get loud to kind of control it? No, no, I'm definitely the, the, the earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the same situation as you, you are the year, the rooster, but you're the month of the rabbit. So these are in conflict. So again, if you don't love what you do, it creates like a meltdown for the rest of your life because, and what happens with the both of you is there's, there's who you are that the world sees and how you behave at work can be opposing. So people who just know you on a social level, like, hey, hey, and if they come to work with you, they're like, whoa, you're a totally different person at work. And even I, don't though know, hold on, I don't know even, if that's true with well, me, though. Well, even though there are some similarities, I'll tell you why. Yeah, opposing yeah. energies, think about this, opposites attract. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The things that we, so you have someone who's opposite of you, you have a lot in common. What you don't care for them, the things you don't care about them are the things they're glorifying that you don't necessarily like about yourself. So you, so who you are at work is diplomatic and you're careful with your words, right? So you have, so you're not going to just blurt something out and get in an argument because first of all, you're facts based. You want to make sure that you know what's, what's being said. You're not going to, you was talking earlier and I wish I'd asked you your energy earlier because that would have made sense for everything. You were saying earlier that if someone approaches you, you may say, um, let me, let me take a pause. Give me time to process that. That's someone who's based in facts and knowledge, not emotion. You want to know what's going on before you make a decision. You're not going to rush in and go, yeah, 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 let's do it. You're going to say, can we, let me find out what's happening. This is when there's a solution that needs to happen. I'm not talking about fun and let's all go get pizza. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when there's decisions that have to be made. Yeah. So if, 
if you are working in a place that is di- that's not satisfying you, it can affect you physically more than it can you. It can affect you physically even though you're quiet about it. Oh, that that's probably for sure. But I'll also tell you that it's a very that that's been a very very purposeful learned behavior, because until I was in my mid thirties, I was the opposite of that. I was very reactive. I was looking for reasons to react. And um, if, if you're the one that made me react, you're also the one that's going to pay for it. At least this is how kind of my mind was until I kind of had to like have a ha- have a strong conversation with myself and, and, and realize that um, that uh, that those um, those emotions were weren't serving me. And, and the conversation that I have with myself has there ever been, and I'll put this on the table and we can chat it out. But has there ever been a moment where I've been reactive and gotten a positive result? And I couldn't think of one example when I've been reactive and had a positive result. So I said, this is a wasted emotion. Yeah, you know, and then and then the more that I tried to stand in that, what happens is the less reactive I become. So what happened and what I mean by reactive is like I get that thing in my throat, I get that thing in my chest, I get that thing. If you get it in the lower back, back up because if you get in the lower back that that that's 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 rage that's where the rage lives is in your lower back and if it starts coming up your back and that's the time where i have to remove myself from a situation because i i I am much more concerned about being reactive than being in the room however he would never be reactive in front of his clients but his family me i'm sure tony we've all seen the reactive the the emotion you, uh, there is times that, I mean, you're very good at reining in it. There's probably like twice the whole time I've known you, but uh, maybe that's to your point where it's like being at work versus home. Yeah. Like you are more comfortable at home and oh, the people sure. that you put but in it's your also, circle. But in, like I said earlier, and I think that, I think this is just a life journey is that, am I a hundred percent? No. Am I striving to be a hundred percent? Absolutely. You know, but, but those also, those moments are a good moment to check yourself. Like, Oh fuck. I lost. I, I missed it. You know, like, like, like I failed myself in that. Oh yeah. Moment. I get that. And I, I, yeah. I want to take a moment to uh, double back on what you said, circle back. You said I had a strong conversation with myself. I love that sentence. I just, I think the fact that you put strong in there, cause a lot of people say, well, I had a conversation with myself. You said I had a strong conversation. Like you're like, okay, sit down. We're having this conversation. The fact that you got real with yourself is so huge, and a lot of people don't do it. But you've got the year of the rooster. So you oh, we're pay back attention. to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that cocky cat? <laughs> 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 Who's that cock? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got, you pay attention to detail. You feel like you notice little things, and, and you've got the, the thing that I always say whenever I've, if you have to have a, um, a trial lawyer, get someone who's got the year of the rooster energy, because, man, you can argue a point. Especially when you believe in it. That is true. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. What? That's true. Because we have conversations all the time about, like, events and stuff that we're going to put on. He's like, okay, well, but think about this. And I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm, mm-hmm here, I'll mm-hmm. tell you exactly what I'm working <laughs> on. And, Katie, and Katie, Katie's my reason is that um, Katie – Katie's very emotional and not in a bad way, but in like, she gets excited about like, Oh, we should do this. Or, or I'm thinking we should do this or whatever. And immediately my brain goes to like, how does this work practically? And then, but sometimes like, and I apologize, I'm apologizing. I probably apologize all the time, but, but, but immediately I go, well, this has to work and this has to work in order for that to work. And like, I, I hate myself for doing it because she's in dream mode. And, and there's a part of me that's smashing her dream. And, 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 and I promise you I'm going to work on this. But sometimes, like, I feel like I'm stepping on her dream while she's in dream mode, and that's not fair. She needs to process through that dream before then I come in with the practical part of it. Yep. And, and I'm trying to be better at that. So Yeah, again, it is. It's like the initial, you know, like, oh, I got such a great idea. Like, call me. I got, we got to yeah. do this. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, but then there's this, and then there's this, and what about this? And I'm like, Corey, shut up. And yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just just for a minute. Yeah, lo- I'm trying like to recognize <laughs> it, and I'm trying to be better. The, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, recognizing it. Is. And the thing yeah. is, a lot of people with, with uh, rooster energy, and I'll get off you in a second. A lot of people with, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm like riding you into town. No. A lot of people who have rooster energy can suffer from analysis paralysis. So you've got to make sure that you're not overanalyzing and that it stops you. Because you have oh, no, a, I'm not worried about that. You, mm, you okay. You, but what you just described, right? Like over, over, like, and, and, and I don't, but I don't get paralysis. Well, it, in the moment, right? So mm-hmm. analysis paralysis can even stop everything, the, the, the energy of the excitement rolling forward. Yes. And this isn't, here's the thing. I work in therapy. I mean, I work with a lot of people in therapy, working with them on their energy. There's no wrong answer here. There's no wrong behavior unless you say it's not working for you. 
And by your own admission, you're like, I'm working on this. So I'm saying that that is a part of how your body energetically flows. So let me explain it very, very briefly. I'll do a, a, a quick snapshot of this. When you're born and your time is written down, you have absorbed energy as it's emanating from the earth. Unknowingly, you know, our nurse is like, oh, you know, they smack you and you make that first cry. Or they get that first, wah, because it, just because you were pulled out doesn't mean that you were, that's when you're born, because you could have been born dead, right? You could have, there could have been a, still, a stillbirth, right? So you, the minute you make sound and you <gasps> breathe in, they've written down your time. When you <gasps> breathe in, you brought in that energy as it's flowing. It is an energetic algorithm of how everything, it's like a DNA coding of how energy is moving. When you've absorbed that, that affects you. That's your year you're born, the month, the day, and the hour. And that, when I look at that ticker tape, when people give me their full birth date, I can start to tell you about yourself. And when I, even on the, the time you're born, I can tell you how you handle money. I can tell you how you are as a oh. lover. I can tell you how you handle your family. I can tell you how you are at your core. At your core, you can have a social persona and a work persona. That day you're born tells me how you really are. When the chips fall down, that's who you are. Those were, that's where your values lie. That's where that spine stands up. That's where you come in and say, I don't think so. Uh, it's your fight or flight energy. So the time that you're born merely means that you've absorbed this energy so it affects how you behave. You can change it. You know, some people are born um, in certain regions of the world. Uh, let's just take the U.S., certain areas of our country where they automatically buy into a certain behavior or a certain way of thinking. They vote a certain way. They pray a certain way. Or they don't pray. Or they, or they treat people who are different a certain way. Whatever that is, that is your epigenetics. That is how you're, you're, being, you're being affected by your environment. But you can choose to make a, a change. You can say, no, this doesn't serve me, so I'm going to move away. Or you can just stay comfortable and stay put and then just go womb to tomb like everyone else in the family and just live that life. But the sheer fact that we have the ability to make a choice and say, okay, so this is who I was born. I'm a rooster, rabbit, dog, tiger, whatever it is. There's certain aspects that I don't care. My day is tiger. So I, I will clock a bitch. <laughs> I have no problem. As a matter of fact, that's what this arthritis in this hand is from, is from fighting when oh, I was younger. Yeah, yeah. Two, I have an older brother who's deaf, and I used to get in fights, and people make fun of him. So I'm, uh. I'm like that person. And But now at my age, I'm like, well, I'm, I didn't stop just recently, but I've been fought in a long time. But I started realizing, ah, oh, man, that's not really a good look. And it didn't feel good. And I've got to be, I'm pretty articulate. I should be mm -hmm. able to speak instead of punch. So how can I take this energy and make it work for me instead of making it destroy me and everyone else around me? And I don't want people afraid to, oh, don't tell Melissa, you know, she'll, she'll like fist up. No, I, I need to be able to communicate more effectively. So I made that change because I didn't like that aspect of me. See, and I hate controversy. Like, I wonder what your day is. Oh, God, I'm going to have to, you guys are going to have to see me. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in. I'm diving I'm in. I'm, swan diving. I'm here for it. Right, I it. love it. I love it. So you have our charts and stuff. Yeah, I was. Um, I just traveled to um, where'd I go? Pennsylvania or New Jersey or somewhere? And I do like book on tapes. And the last, I just, I'll do kind of like a more serious, like heavy manifestation, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one I was doing with just kind of a light, more you know. And it was talking about like astrology and everything you're talking about, like your day, your hour, like the. I don't even remember half the words, but it was so <laughs> interesting, like yeah. how they were describing, you know, you and your personality. And they would talk about, you know, like they describe my daughters like to a T, like it's, it's creepy, right? It yeah. gets creepy. You're like, who are these people? Why do they know so much about my family and about me? It's, but, and, and Western astrology, you're guided by the energy of the stars and the planets. Yeah. Um, the work that I do is, it, uh, this is not a, you know, so therefore, no, I'm just no, saying yeah. the work that I do is from the energy that emanates from the, from the earth. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and how we stub our toes and bump into things as a result of, but it's all any kind of esoteric work that dives into understanding you. I'm all for it too. Love it. Yeah. You know, I, I, two things. One is that, is that I'm a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to all this kind of stuff. Um, but that like, rooster, <laughs> damn, damn rooster. <laughs> 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 um, so, um, 
but you 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 had such a great way of explaining it about like when you take that first breath and that that's the beginning of your DNA and you take in that energy. That was such a perfect way to explain that because I've never kind of like I've never heard an explanation like that. And in my head is like, why does it matter what time I was born? Why does it matter? Why does this matter? And like, and you're the first one to ever kind of explain that to where it makes somewhat sense to Thank me. Thank you. I'm glad. You know what I'm pro- yeah. and, and, and to and to process that. I was thinking about this the other day. So. Two years ago, uh, Tony and I had the opportunity to go to Zion National Park. We did a we yeah. did a hair love retreat in Zion. Shout out to Elizabeth Fay. Um, <laughs> uh, we were there, and when we were there, it's the first time that I ever absorbed the sky like I'd never seen it before. You know, and and in Zion, it's purposeful that there's not light pollution and all that. Yeah. And 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 you know, it, it, when you look up at the st- when you look up at the stars, especially when they're that amazing, I can't I can't even articulate how extraordinary it was. Um, but like I understood that relationship with with astrology, I understood this relationship with these stars because they were all there speaking to me, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then you kind of think about like like the last hundred years, nobody has seen that, right? Right. So for the first ten thousand years of human existence, they were they could see up at those stars, and those stars spoke to them like it spoke to me. But in the last hundred years, because of because of light pollution, most of us don't get to experience that. That's right. And I thought like what 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 a shame of that and and is that the beginning of the end of humanity because we're no longer connected to the stars, the earth, the ground, the whatever. Is that the beginning of the end of human existence? Again, I not not that I've given this a lot of thought necessarily, but but but, but it certainly starts to put all these things sure. into play. Well, you're more than just you know looking down at your iPhone, and you're more than whatever's playing on the TV schedule, and you're more than you're more than. And this is my plea always when I'm talking to people that your your creativity is as close to spirituality as you can get. Your creativity is as close to your spiritual self. And the best way to stay connected to what you experience, Corey, is 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 through meditation. Um, And breath work. I'm a big fan of breath work. Well, and and good breath work can be part of your meditation, right? And it's that, um, and a shout out to Andrew Huberman, Oh. Uh, By the way, I was going to ask you this. I'm so glad you brought him up. Yeah. So I was going to ask you um, when you when you started the podcast, like, do you have guests on, and we, have you had Andrew on? What's my he, question? He's, he's on the list, and he's um, my son is at Boulder University studying neuroscience. He's a senior studying neuroscience, molecular biology, and so I he's kind of I he and I talk about Huberman uh, ad nauseum, and mm-hmm. and when when you realize that this connection is more than right, it's I. Uh, Anyway, the spiritual self, so meditation. So that what <laughs> happened, well, yeah, I can start rolling down to 40 different rabbit holes here. <laughs> the, the, when you meditate, it allows your brain to, to get quiet. And when you incorporate breath work with that, it's supersonic, right? It's, so we are so caught up on the, on the hamster wheel of that marketing and what we've got to do, and we've got to get the house with the fence, and we've got to get two dogs and, and a cat and whatever. We've got to do the stuff that we are losing purpose and, and I'm not talking about that on a religious level I'm just talking about why are you here like when I ask my kids like why were you born why did you guys make it the, the, the seven other babies like bailed out why did you stay stick and you know they're little you can imagine them looking at me I don't know like you know Spongebob on like they didn't know what, <laughs> where I was going with anything now that they're older they're like yeah mom like it, the questions made uh, made us think and it and it and both of them are living outside of the system Makes, it makes me sound like I got my kids off the grid somewhere. But I've told them, I don't want you getting stuck on some system like you got to have this FICO score and you got to have this home and you got to have this in your bank and you got to have this. You define that, please. And yeah, pay your taxes and don't get in trouble. But I mean, you define what all this means. It's not what I want. It's not what the school's told you. It's not what everyone else is feeding you. You got to define it. And the way you do that is by owning your energy and understanding who you are and knowing, yeah, this doesn't work for me. It becomes, it screams in your ears so loud. When you know who you are, the no's are loud, man. And when you get into meditation and you invite your spiritual self to have more of a voice, your sp- the spiritual being, right, this energetic buzz, this little capsule you have inside, call it spirit, call it soul, call it whatever you want, inner light, whatever you want to call it, is real. And when you invite it through meditation and breath work, calming everything down and getting all that your nervous system relaxed, and you say, speak up, man. Because I'm walking through the planet, and I don't know if I'm doing well. Like, why are we here? Why am I here? And with the latest conversation before Congress about UAPs, 
and unidentified aerial phenomena and how also known as UFOs. Yes, and how yeah, yeah marketing and how, <laughs> and, how, and how they're hovering or how they're hovering around our nuclear centers to find out. I'm sure, like, what are these cats up to, right? When you realize you're more than whatever you've been sold here on the ant farm, you start to really take power over who you are in your life, and you can still associate and, and get along in a civilized way, but. It's it sh- it shifts for you, the shift that you felt when you looked up at the sky. Mm. We should be having those shifts on a daily basis and really understanding who we are and why we're here. You know, I want to I want to bring something up, and you brought up voice, and and I think the most important thing that you can do is have a voice within yourself. Yeah. You know, and and that voice is outside of the distractions. That voice is outside of the consumption. That that voice is is that strong voice that you have with yourself. And it's not like there's not answers there. There's only questions there. That's right. In that voice, and and and. Once I started to live there a little more, and again, I kind of go get in and out of it, but this is why breath work is so amazing. Um, I, ju- I had a breath work on Saturday, and I couldn't believe how calm and, and calm and relaxed I was, but how much resistance there was at the same time. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and kind of breath work was like, now I was consciously going, oh, here's the resistance, but, but it's on a deeper level. It's so deep. Oh, yeah. Um, in there, and, and it was... And I remember, and again, with breath work, you kind of want, just like with yoga, like you want those emotions to come through, but then you got to let them go, you know, otherwise you can't get to the next level or yeah. what that is. But I was, I was, I don't know what the right word is. I was shocked. I was whatever about how much resistance there was to just be. And this sounds sure. all like crazy and stuff. But no, it's true. It's true. It, it is true. And you got, you got to dive into resistance. Why? Why? Like, do you, uh, what's the serve here, right? So emotional waves, right? They come at you. And every time that that's comes over, and sometimes people, I've had clients just go, I, unless I'm crying and I don't, I, like logically I have no, there's no reason for me to cry. I've got a story about this. But I'm <laughs> crying. And I just say, your body, how does your body, we talked about how you don't take care of yourself and the body kind of punches mm-hmm. you later on. When you're not facing stuff and not dealing with it, not doing a deep dive and working on self, the, the body will cry. It will have you scream. You'll get angry at somebody, get some guy driving by and have road rage. And it's like, wait, why, is that, why did that guy really, why did that upset me? Right? Mm-hmm. So you, you, if you, when you don't deal with it, it will make you deal with it. Maybe not today, but it will. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that comes back down to the word manifestation, right? Like yep. you manifest that. So if, if, if you're holding on to that, how it manifests is what you have control over. That's right. You know, and if you're manifesting because somebody cut you I off like in that. traffic, you know, then that's the kind of energy that you're going to manifest. If you're manifesting a better life for you and your family and, and, and right. a, calmer, a calmer self, then that's what you're going to manifest. I mean, I think, it, I think it's pretty logical, and I don't think, that it's, I don't think it's like woo-woo at all. You do manifest the energy that you put out. That's, that's right. because that energy is what lives inside of you. And it's scary for people because that's too much control for some people. It's it's nuts. Manifestation is so real. At like probably six months ago, I read like a couple of books about it. I got some crystals. I got all the things that I'm like, it's so. Crystal, she came to our hair show. <laughs> it's so next level. And it, it is you in control of your own shit. It is so like, yeah. And it is scary because you're like, I've been thinking about this and literally now it's here. Like what? And it's, I don't know. It's not something that you can like understand or like describe. No, you just can't because you know, let me try. Listen, because when you're that, when you like do it and you are so methodical about these type of like rituals and uh, it, I mean, it comes like, uh, here's I don't, my, I can't here's, even like go into Here's it. my explanation is that life is always throwing opportunity at you always, but can you see it? It's the question. And, and when you're manifesting and you're manifesting specific things, then you see those opportunities coming. Like life daily is throwing thousands and thousands of opportunities on you. And then when you start to manifest and go, okay, this is what I want for my life, or this is who, where I want to stand, then, then those things have always been coming. You just haven't been able to identify them. You know, what's that saying? Like when, when, the, when the student, the teacher arrives, when the student's ready, yep. you're just the student of your life now, mm-hmm. right? And those teachers come. So, so I think that that's what manifestation is. I, I, I'm not discrediting it at all. But I think what it does, it just makes you hyper aware of what you're going to focus on Absolutely. and hyper aware of where those opportunities lie. I mean, when I was pregnant, I'd never seen so many pregnant people in my life. Right. They yeah, were there right. all along. <laughs> but I never but, saw but those know, bumps. But you know, she needs to lay this, off the cheeseburgers. Right. <laughs> to this, and not just to talk about but the three of us on a table, but, but to this, I can tell you that, that, 
the moment we decided to start serving the hair industry is when the hair d- industry was open arms and open heart about it. Yeah. You know, the moment that we decided to serve the industry with the podcast or, w- or with whatever we're no doing, doubt. you know, we're, we're, we, we, we're o- our funnel is from a place of servitude, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the industry has been incredibly receptive to that. And, w- and me, I was 50 years old when we started to manifest this with no connection. Now, nah, I'm not going to say no, but, but with limited connections within the industry, mm-hmm. you know, but then the industry opened up and said, hey, come on. And this is what happened. This is this. I, I kind of meant to bring this up earlier as you were telling your story, like like you were just in servitude to the industry. Yeah. So of course the industry is going to open up. However, you can't sit back, back to consumption. You can't sit back and consume a lot of like our clients suck and you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to run your business this way. You can't That's consume right. all of that and think that the industry or think that people are going to have an open heart. You know, again, you are manifesting that as yep. well. Yep. A hundred percent. And I, the, the thing about manifesting to use the word one more time is that it, puts the power back in your hands, as I was saying earlier. And mm. we're afraid of that because it's easier to do what you're told. It's kind of easier to do that. You know, it's that nail that the sticks up gets hammered down mentality. And it's like, ah, uh, just, just comply. But that's the girls upstairs questioning and fi- yes, questioning and, and well, why? And it doesn't mean I won't do it, but why, why is it necessary? And so forth. All that stuff is, is vital to Becoming your best self. And really, while we're here, why not optimize this time? Why not make this the best? Because I, I don't personally practice the idea, the idea of um, coming back. You know, I'm not, I, and you'll come up for the word for me because I lost it. There, <laughs> I'm sure you'll come up there. I, I, don't, I don't anticipate that I'll be coming back in any shape or form. I'd probably come back. You mean like after you die, there's no like resurrection? Yeah, I don't, I, for me, I don't, I don't imagine I'm going to be reborn into something else or someone else. I don't imagine that. I, I, I don't, I, I hope not. I hope whatever's inside, this capsule that's inside, gets to go to the next, the next level. I just want to. That sounds very Waco to me. I just, re- <laughs> 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 I don't imagine that I'm going to be coming back as a praying mantis or something. You know, I just think, I just think I'm going to keep going. So while I'm here yeah. and while I'm cognizant, maybe I will and I won't be cognizant, but when I'm here in this thing that I dropped into this body I want to maximize it I want to optimize this life and make it the best I can I really do I don't want to putz around wasting time Melissa you're wow. amazing this has been an incredible conversation I could talk for four or five you six, guys are awesome. hours <laughs> about this um, we literally just crushed an hour just like that really yeah yeah that's amazing Melissa, how can people find you? How can people live in your energy? How can they tell us about the podcast? They tell have us about to hear Mary the podcast. Lou. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Meryl and I have a podcast called Out Comes the Sun on Dash Radio. You can find us on the Mindstream section, mm-hmm. Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and then we, you can find me on Instagram, Melissa Yamaguchi. I'm really pathetic at social media (laughs) i just i get going so fast i do a a class on clubhouse and the gal i have to have gals host it because i'm you know the phone's on but i'm like staring off and talking and i don't they're my one of my get friends on there said melissa are you seeing what people are saying and i don't even have on my glasses i'm not looking at the phone because i'm just going and i'm Mm -hmm. talking so i do classes on clubhouse i I, i'm on instagram but i'm I'm kind of pathetic at staying on top of it. I'm not like posting all the time, but that's where I can be found. Um, and I get DMS all the time. People wanting to know stuff. Um, I speak quite a bit and I will put my classes on there every once in a while. Um, but I'm, and I'm also going to be having my own show on dash pretty soon where I'm talking only energy, but our show outcomes. The sun is really, we're addressing mental wellness and what you need to do proactively to ensure that you are mentally sound. And that's a, that's a daily focus. Mm-hmm. Mm, a moment focus. Yeah, yep. it is. It's like one moment at a time. Every breath, breath in, breath out. Yep. What's the, what, what, what's the Jesus name? Ooh, ha. <laughs> I don't know. You breathe in. <laughs> yeah. So th- there's this, there's this theory that like the way you pronounce like God, it's not Jesus, it's God. The way that you pronounce God's name is the inhale and the outhale. <sighs> I like that. I like that. You breathe God in, you let God go. You breathe God in, you let God go. So it's it, it's uha. I think was, is, is is the pronunciation or the original pronunciation of God, which is just the breath in and the breath that out. Makes so, sense. So makes God sense. is breath. I like it. It makes sense. I like it too. Mm. Melissa, you're amazing. I I like I said, we could do this for hours and hours and hours. I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you spending time with us. Thank you so much, and thank you for hanging out on your day off.
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating, and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.